Pulling flow tube signal cable. Pulling flow tube signal cable. Both outside plant and in building flow tube signal cable are often placed in conduit or duct. The conduit provides protection from both physical and environmental influences. In underground installation, conduit protects cable from shifting rocks, aggressive rodents, and or damage from excavation. Underground cable that is in conduit is easy to replace or upgraded. The old cable can be pulled out of the conduit and the new pulled in without extensive and expensive digging. Pulling flow tube signal cable versus electrical cable. A large percent of underground flow tube signal cable is installed in conduit. Because flow tube signal cable is typically one half to three fourths inch in diameter, it has lower braking strength and is more easily damaged than power cables. Contractors are generally used to pulling power cables and typically these cables can withstand greater tension than our flow tube signal cables. Rarely do they need to be concerned with maximum tension. Preparation for pulling flow tube signal cable The most common method of installing cable into conduit is called cable pulling. Cable pulling is well known to cable installers throughout the world. First a line is threaded through the conduit, the line is attached to the cable, and then the line is used to drag the cable back through the conduit. There is a technology of cable pulling and not just a brute force method. How can one determine the maximum distance that a cable can be pulled without damage? A proper answer to this question means better, more efficient cable installations, with less damaged cable and longer cable life. Flow tube signal cable tension. The first question in pulling any type of flow tube signal is how hard can you pull on it without damaging it, i.e., with how much force. The maximum recommended tension for our flow tube signal cables is 560 pounds, less of course is better. To properly pull the cable, this maximum allowable tension must be known and respected by the installer. Exceeding the maximum allowable tension can split or stretch the cable compromising the cable's integrity and performance. Flow tube signal cable tension considerations. Limits in the length of cable pull come from the need to keep the pulling force below the cable's maximum tension. Force is required to pull cable through conduit to overcome the cable's frictional resistance to movement. Neither the cable nor the conduit is flat and there may be multiple points of contact increasing the frictional force. Pulls are not straight so forces other than gravitational weight occur at conduit bends. These additional forces require more force to pull. Pulling lubricants change and lower the friction coefficient reducing the required force to pull the cable thus saving it from possible damage or alteration, splitting, stretching, or abrasion. Lubricating the cable during the pull. Lubricants play an important part in efficient pulls. Lubricants reduce the coefficient of friction, and thus the force required to pull the cable. In practice, this can mean a reduction in tension of 35 to 95 percent, depending on conduit route and cable jacket type. Not only must the lubricant be slippery, but it also must be compatible with the cable jacket with no long-term adverse effects. While oils and greases sound like fine cable pulling lubricants, they're not. These materials can swell and weaken the plastic jacket on the cable. Some of the wax and soap lubricants used on electrical cables are not suitable for flow tube signal cable, as they can stress crack the outer jacket. Water-soluble lubricants are best to use. 
pull setup. Conduit serves to protect the cable from physical damage. To prevent physical damage PVC and flexible conduit serve this purpose. Conduit also serves to provide electromagnetic and electrostatic shielding when the conduit is solid steel. Pulling long lengths of cable requires a cable reel to unwind the cable as it's being pulled to prevent twisting. Before starting the pull you should estimate your total run to ensure there is sufficient length. Each 90 degree turn in the conduit should have an access to allow the cable to be pulled straight and fed into the next section. Starting the pull. Feed the cable slowly unwinding the cable to prevent twisting of the internal conductors. Lubricate the cable as you go. Pull the cable straight keeping even tension as you pull. Pull sufficient cable to complete the distance to the sensor head. Pull with steady even tension. It is important to continue lubricating the cable as it is fed into the conduit. Feed the cable slowly into the next section of conduit. If the cable begins to bind or drag apply lubricant. Continue the pull. Continue to feed the cable into the section lubricating as required. Pull enough cable through to complete the next segment. Lubricate the cable if it begins to bind. Ending the pull. Pull sufficient cable through to the sensor head to allow cable end preparation if already not done so. Connect the cable to the sensor ensuring proper strip back lengths. Transmitter end of the cable. Cut the transmitter end cable to the length required to complete the pull to the transmitter. Transmitter end preparation. Prepare the transmitter cable end and ensure the cable is properly stripped back to the proper lengths. If the meter was ordered from the factory fitted and potted the pull obviously has to be started from the sensor end. Great care has to be taken not to twist or stretch the cable. The limit of the pull tension must be reduced as much as possible to avoid pulling the wires from the sensor head terminals. To pull from the sensor in a fitted and potted meter the cable should be laid out on a flat surface and fed slowly into the pull to avoid twisting the internal conductors. Final pull to the transmitter. Pull the final length of cable through the conduit leading to the transmitter. It should be noted that at this point the sensor head connections are still exposed and for installations that require sensor head potting the meter must be connected, commissioned, and operating error free before proceeding with the sensor head potting. Transmitter Connection Connect the transmitter end of the cable and power up the meter. Test the meter and zero the meter. Check that all alarms clear and operate the meter with flow to ensure that the meter is performing properly without warnings or errors. Sensor Head Potting After confirming that the meter is operating properly and free of all errors and warnings the sensor head may be potted for those installations requiring that level of protection. Conclusion Carefully secure the cap to the top of the sensor head. Ensure that the seal is tight and the conduit seal is tight as well to complete the protection of the sensor head electronics. Secure and seal all conduit access points to ensure the conduit is not subject to flooding. Note that in this presentation the cable was routed through a conductive conduit with no other cables or wiring. This affords the highest degree of noise suppression for the signal cable as well as physical protection. When running the cable over long distances this technique is highly recommended to avoid poor meter performance and difficult to resolve meter shutdowns. This is Cliff McQueen. Thank you for watching my presentation and if you have any comments or questions please direct them to
abbwarminsterflowguys at gmail.com.